because I believe science might offer an answer to the curse of the Bambino. Why someone took so long to hire that guy is beyond me. Anybody who's not tearing their team down right now and rebuilding it using your model, they're dinosaurs. One of the great things about money is it, it buys a lot of things. One of which is the luxury to disregard what baseball likes, doesn't like, what baseball thinks, doesn't think. <laughs> This is threatening, not just a way of doing business, but, it's, but in their minds, it's threatening the game. How can you not be romantic about baseball? All right, welcome to episode three of the Baseball Ops Podcast. We've got a great show today. It's exciting. We interviewed MLB legend uh, Marvin Freeman, better known as Free, or we were allowed to call him as Free, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Love the name Free. Uh, a little bit about Free or, or Marvin Freeman. He's 11-year big leaguer. Uh, with I think the Braves, but I mean I saw him with the Phillies. Who else did you see? I, think him I saw him with the Rockies. At Rockies, one point. yep, the Rockies as well. Very dynamic pitcher. Reminds me a lot of Bob Gibson, uh, which he talks about how he modeled a lot of of his delivery, which is pretty cool to see. Um, also, too, he's he's big now in in youth development. So he works with the Urban Youth Academy, working with uh, a lot of uh, the African American kids as well, helping them be uh you know helping them grow in this game which statistically we've seen that there's been a big decline in popularity of you know uh african-american youth coming into this game so it's great to see him doing that we talk a little bit about that um we go into his amazing post on instagram uh that's really how i got to know him which has been really fun he's just got these really fun witty uh well done like even the graphics and we try to get some secrets from him on on how he did the graphics but how else would you describe his instagram i mean yeah i love his instagram posts they're i guess leaning more towards the controversial side on our side i guess you would say but it's it's a breath of fresh air when you have a guy who's uh uh at his level uh of play all the way going all the way up to the major leagues and, and uh using a similar uh, ground up approach and, and really preaching about it and trying to coach it uh, with his athletes. So it, it's it's good to see. Yeah, and and we talked basically more about his overall approach on pitching, which is ground up. It, you know, a lot of things. A lot of obviously we had a lot of things in common with Top V, and I, we've been sharing a lot of things in common just back and forth through Instagram. Uh, if you haven't been watching our Instagrams pages, um, which is is pretty cool. If you want to follow him, yeah, Freeman Baseball. Um, I believe on Instagram. Also, to follow us, you'll find we repost a lot of his stuff. So follow Top Velocity, you'll see us reposting a lot of his stuff. And he's just a good guy. He's like really trying to kind of give back to to youth uh, youth development. Um, basically, after having su- such success with it in his career, he talks about how he had such success, and he talks about that transitioning into becoming a coach, and really what he is trying to you know counteract or kind of fight against in in this industry where he feels like there's a, there's there's these negative sides to this industry and, and and he talks about that and he talks about how he's gone against fighting against the that, that side of the industry so we uh we're going to cover that with him in a, in a in a really fun awesome interview um anything anything left to say uh, no, I think it's a really good interview, and um, you know, like I said, it's just awesome that you have a guy with that much big league experience who uh, is really on board with uh, what we're about. So I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so let's get on with the interview. All right, Brent Porcio here. We got a special guest today, Marvin Freeman, uh, ex major leaguer. Uh, thanks for coming and getting on the show with us, Mr. Freeman. It's my pleasure, man. I like what you guys are doing. And, um, you know, hopefully a lot of guys can learn some things from what everybody is trying to do, which is help pitchers be um, more consistent, get on the same plane and actually um, keep their health. Um, because, you know, that's what it's all about. You can't play this game hurt. It, it only feels, you know, natural and you, your confidence is up when you can play this game and you're healthy. So, so well, I like what you guys are doing. Yeah, and we love what you're doing, man. And that's really why I wanted to interview you. I really have enjoyed your Instagram. That's just how I've gotten to know you. You know, I really, you know, you posting your footage of, of when you played has been great because I it brought back memories for me. I'm 40, and I remember <laughs> watching you. You were really a really powerful, dynamic pitcher. You were you were a lot of fun to watch. And you had what 11 years in the bigs. Yeah, I had 11 in the bigs, um, 14 overall in, in pro ball. But, um, 
you know, when you get there, man, it's so hard to stay because, um, you know, you're facing the same guys year in and year out, and it's no more surprises. You got to execute or you can get executed. Well, obviously you figured it out. I mean, an 11-year big league career is incredibly impressive. What, what would you credit your success to having 11 years? Um, actually, being able to um, – learn from others. Um, I saw a lot of guys that, that did it right and a lot of guys that did it wrong. And by me being able to um, kind of pattern my career after the guys that were having success and see what they were doing, and then also learn from some of the mistakes other guys were doing, it kind of gave me an opportunity to continue to have success or, or trick teams as long as I could. <laughs> I like to say I tricked enough of them. <laughs> I, I bet you did, and you made a living off of it. That's awesome. So Talk about, um, I remember one of your posts you put up, you showed your delivery and you just, I mean, it was spot on to Bob Gibson. Was I right? Was he a big influence of yours? Oh, he was. Um, growing up in Chicago, I got a chance to see St. Louis and the Cubs go at it a lot. And um, Ferguson Jenkins and Bob Gibson were two guys. I mean, if they were pitching that day, I wasn't going to school. <laughs> I was going to watch that at home, man. So um, I really got a chance to kind of, that really kind of made me say, hey, I want to play in the big leagues too because these guys, um, they're out there doing it on the biggest stage and they're doing it with aggressiveness. Fergie had the control. Bob had more of the power and the attitude. And I just tried to really hone those guys, um, you know, what they were doing and, and kind of make some of it my own. But, um, yeah, Bob Gibson was my guy, man. Yeah, he was he was the man. He was an incredible watch. And you reminded me a lot of him. It was pretty, it was pretty cool to see. So – Talk about now. Now you're not a player, um, and and you're doing a lot for the youth, and you're doing a lot as a coach. Talk about the transition to a coach and, wh and why you wanted to do it. Well, you know, as a player, I, I had some good coaches, and then I had some bad coaches. I mean, you're just going to have that, you know, as long as you play this game. But um, when my son started um, playing baseball at around 10 years old, I wanted to make sure that he got, you know, all of my knowledge and, and and knowledge of at a big league level that was going to help him kind of develop as a pitcher without having any arm injuries. And when I started coaching him, of course, he played on the team with other pitchers, so they wanted help as well. So I kind of – I loved it. I mean, I love helping guys understand what they're trying to do, and I love helping guys succeed. And then when they have success – you know, everybody benefits from it. But um, that was my motivation starting out, and I just haven't been able to get away from it. Well, you do it really well. And, I mean, talk about – you were telling us before we started recording about what you're doing now with uh, – is it U Team USA? It's Team USA in conjunction with Major League Baseball. Um, we um, have youth clinics through the urban youth academies throughout the country. We go around and we um, do the – instructional portion we play games we have a um, team called the breakthrough series which plays in perfect game events throughout the um, summer and the fall and this is from ages 14 to 17 U. so a lot of these guys are pretty polished um, as far as talent wise but then sometimes the the mechanical things that they need to know the little tweaks that they may need to help them continue to get them to the next level is is what we can offer at, at a big league um, level. We have all big league coaches um, from Marquise Grissom, Eric Davis. Um, we had Ken Hill. We had um, Dave Stewart, Darren Oliver, Latroy Hawkins. We were all the coaches at the um, the recent Dream Series out in Arizona where we had the top 60 high school pitchers in the country come out and try and give them something that they can take into their high school season that's going to make them a little bit more successful. Hunter Green was one of the um, players out there, and he's uh, an incredible high school talent. Um, guy's throwing 95 to 100 miles an hour in high school, and wow. he does it so smooth with his mechanics. And, I mean, it was just a pleasure to actually see him in person and, and some of the other kids as well. So. That's um, what we've been involved with. Uh, we're still trying to grow the game in the um, in the minority communities because they're trying to expand and, and, and just pique a little bit more interest in baseball among you know players of color. So um, that's um, 
pretty much what we're doing. We're pretty much on the diversity side of it. Yeah, I'm, and I've followed um, I've followed this before. I mean, it's it's through U- Team USA, isn't it? The Urban um, what's it called again? The Urban League. The Urban Youth Academies oh, throughout the country. They have one in New Orleans. Um, yeah. Um, they have one in Houston, Chicago, L.A. I think they started out in L.A. and Compton. And um, Daryl Miller is the um, coordinator of that. He's um, Reggie Miller's older brother, but he's um, the director for the Major League Baseball. And it's it's run out of um, the Major League Baseball offices out of New York. So we got major backing from Major League Baseball. And, 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 and that's one of the main things that draws a lot of these guys in because they know – that they're going to get some quality instruction from guys that not only have done it, but have taught it as well. Yeah. I mean, because there has been a decline of African Americans in baseball is, I mean, isn't that true statistically over the years? Oh yeah. I mean, it's down to maybe 6% now. Um, Um, But you know, to understand that is to have to understand that a lot of guys, they don't want to pitch. A lot of guys think being a PO as they call it is a slap in the face. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're really trying to promote pitchers and catchers to give them a, an opportunity at some of the, you know, positions that are available constantly on the college level. Um, you can't have too many good high school pitchers or college pitchers, and that's what we're trying to make guys realize. You only can have three guys in the outfield, but you got a good pitcher. You're going to find a way to get him in that game as much as possible. Well, what I mean, so obviously baseball is not that popular in the African American communities here. W- what sports are really the the popular sports that baseball is competing with? Well, of course, it's football and basketball because you got that immediate gratification. You go right to the um, colleges where you get a full ride. You know, in baseball, you're only getting eleven point seven scholarships, so a lot of guys are on a partial, um, and some of them can't especially coming out of some of these um, urban communities, they can't afford to pay right. fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a year when they can go and play um, football absolutely free. And they're almost in the NFL. If you go to a, a SEC school, this is better than, you know, some of the NFL um, layout. So, you know, that in itself is enough to make a guy say, do I want to pay to go play baseball? Or do I want to go play football or basketball for free? Right. So, what do you? Th- how does baseball win? I mean, how does baseball start to bring back more African Americans um, in, into the sport? Um, you know, that's a question that everybody's asking. I say, I like this World Baseball Classic. Let's throw, let's throw a team full of brothers out there for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm all <laughs> and let us play against you know some of the guys as well. Um, yeah. But I- I'm loving this this game, man. Um, it's um, you see the the, the teams from. The islands, they're having fun. Yeah. They're, you know, what they call what they call it, um, they lifting and separating, they're they're uh, elevating and celebrating. Right. You know, they're doing all of this and that. And um I think a lot of time in African American communities they feel the, the players feel stifled that, that they're gonna be perceived as hot dogs or, or showboats when they get out there and express themselves. So that was another thing that uh, we need to really kind of bring up to today's standards let these guys have a little fun i mean if you hit a home run off me as long as you're not running around the bases looking in the eye looking at me in the eyes and pointing at me then hey i ain't got no problem with it it was a mistake i made have fun do what you got to do but if i strike you out with the bases loaded hey i'm gonna do a little dancing too so you know you just gotta make things go both ways and it is they call it the show for a reason so let's let these guys show right well i mean so how do you coach it um I mean, for all all cultures. I mean, so when you're coaching it with these youth, what can you be hard on them today? I mean, is is it a challenge today to coach the youth as opposed to when when you grew up or when we when I grew up? Well, you know, I, I think I have a good relationship with guys because they know I'm still a kid. I mean, I can talk to you in the in the bullpen and get on you, but at the same time, they respect the fact that I know what I'm talking about, and I think that's that comes from building a relationship. I mean. Anybody can tell you what you're doing wrong, but if the kid doesn't trust you, then he's not going to buy into the things that you tell him. So I think you got to know each guy individually, what specifically drives him, what may push him away, and and things of that nature, because no pitchers are the same. And if you treat them all the same, you're going to lose some. So I think that um, a lot of times we don't get a chance to really get to know the individual pitcher and how his his makeup is going to determine how you coach him. 
And um, I, I coach each guy individually. I don't mind calling a guy out in front of other people, but you got to know who it is and you got to know if that's going to motivate him or send him in his shell. So, you know, you won't you won't know that unless you know the kid. So I, I keep everything on an individual basis. Well, that's good. And just a little bit about, like, why did it become Freeman Baseball? I mean, you obviously have turned – you're trying to brand it. What's the mission behind Freeman Baseball right now? Well, my mission is to, like I said, get guys from the time that they start wanting to pitch, making sure that what they're doing and what they're trying to develop is going to keep them playing up through college. My mission really is to get guys um, to play in college ball. Now, once you get to college, then the talent level is going to thin out, and you'll know if you're going to pro or not. But I don't ever try and um, use professional baseball as a – as a, as a goal to the end, I just like to make sure guys can get an opportunity to keep playing this game as long as they can, play it healthy, and still have a chance if they got talent. A lot of guys think you can just show up and you're going to get picked, but, you know, you still got to have talent. And um, I used to say, you know, I'm 6'7". I'm an inch taller than Michael Jordan. <laughs> and I used to try and jump like him, but I couldn't. I even had my tongue hang out a couple times. <laughs> But uh, everybody can't be the same, man. <laughs> you right. just got to try and get guys the best that they can be with what they have. And, um, you know, with hard work, sometimes they can extend that. But um, my mission has been to really help the youth pitchers from 10U all the way up through they get to uh, high school. And I even work with college guys as well. But these are guys that know that I have a relationship with them and I can continue to kind of help them along the way down their road. Um but that's what um, basically I do. Do you offer – what do you offer to them? Is it just – are you doing this in private lessons? Do you offer clinics, camps? I mean, what do you offer with, with Freeman Baseball? Freeman Baseball offers everything from um, private camps to private lessons to um, – I, I do video analysis for them. I um, make sure that um, they have uh, – I even um, actually do seminars with coaches – especially pitching coaches, to try and get them to understand how the body should be working and how to, you know, recognize things that um, that pitchers are doing, really try and teach them how to utilize the video equipment that's available out there. Because, um, you know, if you're moving as fast as you are down the mound, it's hard to really see that with the naked eye. So a lot of guys, they still try to uh, do a pitching lesson while they're sitting on the bucket, and um, uh, it's just impossible to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just really want to make sure that um, everybody is pretty much on the same page um, with 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 um, baseball from a level that I played at, and all the way down to little league baseball. Well, now that we got a good idea of, of and hopefully everybody listens, got a good idea of, of who you are, who you stand for. Let's get into the nuts and bolts uh, of, of pitching today. Let's, I mean, the reason I, I really was drawn to you is I just love how you do your Instagram uh, post and and the message you're putting out there. And, and I think we've shared some of the same messages. Um, I mean, I think if you could get anything out there that you really want the pitching community in today's era to, to hear and understand, what would that what would that be? It would be that I think your landing leg is the anchor that begins the um, kinetic chain in your body. If your landing leg is moving and spinning and that knee's going forward when you land, it's going to affect your ball control and release all the way up through, you know, when you start to deliver the pitch. So that's really been my um, uh, main focus, at least for the last two or three years, is to make sure that these guys have good stability from driving off the rubber into that landing leg so that they can project the upper body over the front side and let the arm kind of carry itself more so than forcing the arm to do all the work. Um, I see so many guys that they're not using their lower halves well, but they still throw hard. But they think that that's going to be the answer. And it may be a short-term answer, but when you get into a, a heavy workload and you get to the course of a long season, you always see that these guys, by the end of 
the summer, they're breaking down, they lose a lot, and they don't really sustain that um, success that they had early because their bodies is is not strong enough to, um, you know, continue at this the same kind of pace that they started out with. So, you know, I, I really try and focus on the ground up aspect of it. And, you know, I've always taught that if your arm isn't working like a whip, if you can actually see it stopping while you're delivering the pitch, then that that's, that force has to go somewhere. And mostly that's going to go to the elbow or shoulder. I mean, but doesn't this just make sense? I mean, I just have never understood why all these other coaches and influencers out there in this skill really think it's anything but what you just described. Ground up, <laughs> using the whole body. Why do we find so many coaches? Why, why are we the minority that think this way in this sport? Why are there so many coaches believing that the arm is somehow the secret to, to being an elite in this game? Well, you know, my thought is that I think it's, um, you know, a lot of guys want to take the shortcut. It's hard work to, to get your body in condition mm -hmm. to repeat that delivery over and over again with power and explosiveness. And to, to say that it's just all arm, it eliminates half the work. Right. Uh, you know, I can throw a, I can throw a weighted ball, but when I, when it gets down to it, I got to put a five ounce baseball in my hand. Right. I got to be able to control that. I got to be able to make that do what I'm trying to get it to do. And a lot of things are just so, you know, so ridiculous to me. I mean, some, some guys may actually may be working for some guys, some guys, um, you know, they, they, they swear by what they're, what they're working on. And, I just sometimes I just see things that I don't have any idea how that relates to pitching. Oh, I mean, you know, if you're pitching, you got to you, your body has to be strong enough to repeat that action. And a lot of guys just want to think that it's from all arms. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know what they're thinking, basically. I don't know. And, and I question it. I, I do question why it I mean, where they even got that information from. Like, I, I feel like it's, am I wrong? I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like it's a lot of guys in this business who didn't have a lot of success for, you know, training themselves personally. And this is them trying to reinvent the wheel outside of them using it on themselves first as the guinea pig. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, exactly. I know exactly what you're saying because when I'm doing, when I'm looking at a guy and what he's not doing, I can kind of go through it in my mind and see when, because I've done so many different approaches. By me being six seven, I had to really try and find what was going to be um, uh, a, a more of a uh, economical way or, or more efficient way to make my body get explosive and continue to repeat that. So I had a lot of different approaches, but the ones that worked and the ones that didn't work, I've experienced those, and I know for a fact that if I had a pull hamstring or a bad um, left knee that I was going to have a really horrible time trying to pitch because I couldn't drive and then I couldn't stabilize. If that was the case, I could roll out there in a wheelchair and just throw the ball, you know, <laughs> with my upper body and try and get people out. Right. If the low half wasn't to be the most important part right. of the, the, the foundation of your pitching. So I, I really go off what I see, what I know guys are trying to do because that's what I did, and I know what I was trying to do. In your yeah. career, oh, sorry, yeah, no, jumping in, but I was going to ask: in your career and uh, with the athletes you train, what is some of the stuff that you implement to develop that uh, explosiveness and, and power in the lower half that you're talking about? Well, most of the time, we've been doing as as of late. We've been training more like sprinters. Um, we've been getting a lot of um, flexibility in the hip areas, uh, doing a lot of explosive um, lower half. Um, weightlifting, um, plyos, um, the, um, been doing a lot of, um, I, I, I've been working with, a, a former, um, Olympic sprinter, um, Ed Lovelace out of California. He really brings the entire, uh, from the knees to the chest kind of training area into play. And I've seen how it's made guys core stronger, you know, I saw a post you put up about glutes. Right. If you don't have strong glutes, you can't you can't drive and continuously get your arm and timing in position to recreate 
that you know that delivery that you're going to need to be more efficient. So yeah. um, we've been doing a lot more uh, sprinting. You know, a lot in the, in the old days they'd have you run poles, running you know real mm-hmm. slow, and and that's just training your body to move slow. Right. So we do a lot of a lot more quick pace things. It's a lot of lower half squats, um, weight transfer squats, and things like that. I'm not um, as scientific as you guys are as far as um, breaking things down. I kind of keep things in layman's terms. And then if I see a kid has poor functional strength in his legs, then I'll address him getting in positions that he needs to be in. And then he can feel for himself where he's weak at. And those are the things that we kind of really tackle on a uh, individual basis. And, um, you know, from there on those, you know, a lot of times guys, um, they, they do a lot of training with, um, outside entities. So, if they can do whatever they need to do to get themselves in pitching condition, that's fine with me. But I, I, I'm, I'm totally for making sure guys are functionally strong in areas that's going to help them as pitching. That's awesome. So talk about that. I mean, once again, I'm going to go back to your Instagram. Where do you get your creative from? I love how you really bring your message <laughs> yes, out there. Great content on Instagram. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've always been um, – Pretty good with quips and comebacks. Um, I was like the, the the guy you didn't want to mess with in the clubhouse. <laughs> good. If, if you wanted to go back and forth. You didn't pick me because I, I I was pretty funny. Um, I still think I got some. Um, my wife thinks I'm pretty funny too. <laughs> well, that's good. Y'all have a long marriage, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We've been married for 32 years, so oh, wow. she's probably heard them all. So I'm still trying to come up with some new ones. But um, no, you're very you witty. Know, and you're, and you're perfect, man. I mean, you hit it at the right time. And you, you, I mean, you're better than me, man. I thought I was good at it. And I finally <laughs> met my match. <laughs> um, hey, man, just, I'm just trying to help out, man. I want guys <laughs> to, you know, not only get the message, but let it stick to them. Because sometimes we're, in a, we're more visual now than we've ever been. And, you know, everybody's got a video camera. So that's all they do. The eyes see it first, and then maybe it'll seep into their head. So... You know, that's how I try and get my point across by utilizing the short attention span that we have now with that one minute or less um, video or, or post that I can put up. And I've been getting pretty good response. I bet you are. So how how are you doing it technically? Are you are you designing all that or do you, do you have some secrets you can un- unveil here? You know what? Then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> 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 no, but I'm, um, you know, I, I got several apps that I combine and and, and cool. twist and turn and cut and paste and do cool. things with. I mean, I would have to inv- involve you in my um, Freeman Baseball I video course. Yeah. If you guys will well, get you, the real you need gist, to put it uh, together. I no doubt about it, man. I, I got all my coaching buddies still trying to, you know, learn how to utilize it for themselves as far as breaking hitters down and, and showing things in slow motion and rewinding and, and things like that. But all those things are helpful because you can see what position you're in or you're not in. And that, you know, if you if you can see it, you can say, oh, man, that's not what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. So now guys can get a better idea of how to, you know, at least go about correcting something. Are you are you pop as popular on any other social networks besides Instagram? Yeah, Facebook. I got a Freeman Baseball on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I, my Twitter is really just an extension of the Instagram, but um, I don't do a lot of tweeting. Um, you know, I save that for the president, and um, <laughs> I just try and make sure that um, that my message gets out to the, the 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 guys that I'm working with, and most of those guys are on Instagram. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to be as accessible as I can to them and um that's that's an easy way to do it so how did you get a- almost 13,000 followers I want to know the secrets to that too <laughs> on Instagram one day at a time man one day at a time well, how long uh, you've been working it on Instagram it's probably been about um I think I started when my son graduated from high school three years ago oh, so wow. but that, um, you're crushing it well, yeah, it was a little slow, witty. man, starting out, but then I had to kind of really uh, pay attention to the, the the traffic flow and how to, you know, really get um, more people to see what I was talking about. And the first thing that I knew that a lot of kids now, they don't want to read, man. They don't. They don't want to read. I mean, you can put up a post and you can explain exactly what it's talking about in your comment and nobody ever reads that. Right. So I try to make sure I get 
that you know that visual uh, connection first, and then maybe they'll say, well, what does this have to do with anything? And then maybe they'll go down and read what I actually had to say. And then if they do, they get the message. But if they don't, they still get entertained. So I'm kind of mixing entertainment with information and hopefully that'll, you know, draw more people in and and get them to really see, you know, what the true message is. And and that's to help guys. And and, and I don't put up with any nonsense on my um, posts. You know, guys say something out of line. I'll erase it immediately. If he says it again, he's blocked. But I'm not there to please everybody. Right. And I'm just trying to, try to help guys that's going to need it and accept it. And if they move on, then that's that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to help that one person or that one guy. Yeah, I love that perspective. I, I think, you know, because I feel like we're doing the same thing. I feel like we're we're doing we're providing better value as opposed to all those Instagram posts from other, I guess, so-called gurus who just flash up numbers and running throws and and just trying oh to God. get these kids to flock just because they're seeing these flashes of high numbers, you know. Oh my God, that 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 was one of the most recent posts that I had. I'm going, what is the use of taking a 15 step run and then throwing into a crow hop flip with a guy <laughs> on the other end of a radar gun trying to tell you you're throwing 100 miles an hour and then you get on the mound and you're not using your legs. So shouldn't that tell them that you got to generate some force from the ground you to think. get that arm to really go through the zone like that? But they think that, oh, it's a pull down and it's really um, helping to throw with intent. I'm going, well, <laughs> throw with intent? <laughs> I mean, that's out, not intend to throw the ball? I mean, come on. Man. You need, so, you need to come hang guys. out with us. You would fit in so well here, Mr. Freeman. That was our whole discussion <laughs> today. It's unbelievable, man, some of the – some of the gibberish that I hear. And then when I try to explain it, they always tag their coach so he can get on and kind of defend it. <laughs> Come on, dude. It ain't really I know, nothing bring it on. I mean, I encourage, I, encourage, I encourage that kind of debate. The problem is those people don't want to debate that because they have nothing to debate. Exactly, because they feel like they're going to be exposed. And when they get exposed, they're going to lose some business. And I tell guys, I'm not here to take business away from you. If what you're teaching exposes itself, you're going to lose the business. Right. So why not um, give these kids something that they can use and they, that, they, that their money can pay for that that's going to be useful? And you you get something out of it too when you're helping guys. But, you know, like you said before, when you try to reinvent the wheel, you think what you're saying is correct. And, you know, it may help a guy or two, but you can't put everybody in the same pot and say that since this one guy has had success everybody's going to su- is, is going to succeed doing this and when you're seeing arms and elbows popping like you know at a record pace you know there's got to be something behind that well so how do you how do you go about competing with it though because I, I think that's something that we struggle with too and like brent kind of touched on it's like the minority talking about uh, using the lower half, using your whole body. And then it's just really disheartening sometimes when you're going on social media and, and you see all of this blowing up with these running throws. And, you know, you want to give the good information like you're talking about, but I feel like there's just so much information being put in front of these kids nowadays uh, that it's, it's, it's hard for them to decipher what's true, what's the right advice, uh, where they should spend their money, where they should spend their time training. So how, how do you compete with that? Well, you know, like I said, I, I'm out there and I'm out there and I'm coaching several different teams. I'm, I'm talking to people all the time. And, and, and when I do um, have a question from a pitcher, I always say, try it and see what it feels like doing it this way or see what it feels like doing it that way. Tell me what feels um, uh, more natural or, or which, which way is going to feel more efficient. And then you can kind of get an idea for yourself. But to go out and just try and really compete. I don't really compete with other guys. Um, this is just too many guys out there. Yeah. Um, but um, at the same point is when I get a guy that's had that's done it a certain way and then I show him a more efficient way, he knows for himself right there. But how many guys can you reach on a one-on-one basis? You know, like I said earlier, that the parent really wants their kid to get that magic bullet. They want them to get as far as they can, as quick as they can. They see the dollar signs behind throwing 100 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. But I always say, hey, I've, I've known many guys in the minors that gotten drafted, can throw the ball through a brick wall, 
but never got out of A ball because they didn't know how to pitch. Mm -hmm. So my whole focus is on pitching, understanding how to make the ball do what it's supposed to do, understanding uh, how to read hitters in situations like that. I'm not really an, I'm not really one of the guys that's going to tell you that I'm going to make you throw harder. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go out there and tell you that um, – you know, if you work with me, you're going to be better than everybody else because some guys just don't do the work. Yeah. But um, if a guy's doing the work and he sees success, he's just going to stay with me until he's not pitching anymore. Mm. And I've had guys from 14 all the way through college, and I build relationships more than I'm trying to just build clients. I mean, it's always good to have a 1,000 guys coming in. The money's great. But at the same time, you know, if you're – teaching something that's temporary, then you, you're not gonna you're not gonna benefit from it in the long run. So a lot of times just saying that I'm competing with guys, I don't I don't compete with other guys. Yeah. But from a health standpoint too, I think that's what's frustrating frustrating for me and Brent is when you take an yeah. approach that's just so much throwing and and especially with these high intent weighted ball throws. I, like I understand guys they want the quick success. They want to see the velo gains and stuff like that. But from a health standpoint is where it really hurts me. And I know it hurts Brent too, because he, you know, in his career hurt his arm and my career ended up hurting my arm. And, it, and it's like, how do you get the information out that this isn't the right way to go about developing? This is, uh, you know, you need to spend more time learning the lower half. You need to spend more time uh, learning to throw healthy. Well, I mean, we just got to continue to grind away, man. Um, it's um, yeah. this is it's going to be a slow process. Um, mm -hmm. Anytime you got fifteen people in one ear saying, telling you something, it's hard to really figure out who's telling you this for their gain or your gain. So we just got to keep beating the path, man, and keep doing what we're doing, and and, and letting these guys see for themselves that um, you know. There's there's a right way to do something, and then there's a way that you can do things that you may see results, but what's going to be the side effect? Yep. You know, as long we as just, we, we just need to keep set. putting out creative Instagram posts, we'll get them right. Yeah. No doubt about it, man. I mean, <laughs> if these guys don't, if they don't, if they don't accept the actual science that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, then, you know, what can we do anyway? Exactly. I mm -hmm. mean, you can beat a guy over the head all you want and tell him, no, 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 that's not right. But if he's going to continue to do that and continue to fail at it, then, you know, what can you what can you do to change that? Nothing. So most of the time you just got to keep staying on your course and um, keep putting out the truth and, and then making sure that you have guys that are willing to, uh, debate, which you probably won't get a lot of them. You got to be able to um, let them expose themselves. Um, so, you know, what you guys are doing is, is going to be beneficial. It, you may not reach 100 million people, but the few that you will reach, they'll get a full understanding. I even tried to kind of interview some of the guys that you guys have worked with, and everything they've told me is has been solid. And cool. so I, 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 um, I kind of co-sign with you guys on what you're doing. Um, Thanks. I would like to come and meet you guys in person as well and, and maybe kind of incorporate some of the the um, explosive body exercises that you guys put out and, and things of that nature that's, that, that's going to really enhance what I'm talking about as far as being able to gain explosiveness off the rubber and to stability on the front side, which is going to help that trunk rotation. Absolutely. But a lot of times, guys, they they don't. You know they don't um they don't buy into the hard work portion of that and they want to get it fast quick and in a hurry and sometimes you just can't you ain't gonna be successful like that mm -hmm. well it's pretty cool that we're on the same page so i'm 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 all for accepting this alliance let's let's uh keep doing what we do and let's get together sometime soon but uh no doubt about it, man. and tell tell it before we go last question give us I just want to know what's what's your uh, future of Freeman baseball? Where where do you see this going? What would you like to see it doing uh, over the years from here? Well, I like to see it reach more people and and getting them to understand that um, your entire body is what needs to be used when you when you're actually trying to gain power and velocity, and then you have to be able to think about what position your body's in that's making your pitches do what they're doing. A lot of times guys don't understand why their ball is cutting or why their ball is not sinking. It's because their hand position is not in the right 
is not in the right spot to create the spin to make the ball do what it's supposed to do. And all of that goes back to stability. If you're unstable, then your release is going to be unstable. So now your control suffers. Mm -hmm. Now when your control suffers, you're behind in the count constantly. And I don't care how hard you throw. If you're 2031, hell, I can get a I can get a good swing on you. And I only right. got two homers <laughs> in big league. So Hey, you got to hit know, off the unit, big unit. Come on. I got big unit, man. You know, I chopped <laughs> off that concrete in Montreal back in the day where it was like it was like a piece of linoleum over the concrete. <laughs> that was the rug. It was hard up there, but he was he was upset about that, and um, I, bet. I, I got that in my book now. I got a Hall of Famer, you know. I got a hit off of, so that, that's always something that I can kind of brag about. Um, well, I'm sure but, you uh, struck out a few Hall of Famers as well, huh? Yeah, I put them out there on Instagram as well. <laughs> I, <laughs> I see so I see a lot of these guys, um, you know, at golf tournaments and things of that nature, and they're always talking about, hey man. How come you didn't put the home run I hit off you up there? I'm going, hey, dude, this is Freeman baseball, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to promote myself and um, really just try and get these guys how to to understand what it means to be a pitcher and not just going out there and thinking that they can just throw the ball past people. Because I, I, I took that approach when I first came up, and I struggled. But it, was, it wasn't until I learned how to – stay off the middle of the plate and learn how to pitch and make the ball move that I start experience a, a, a prolonged amount of success. And, you know, that, that approach hasn't changed. A lot of times I hear guys say, well, that's the way it used to be, but this is a new day now. I don't see anything wrong with getting guys 0-2 and trying to make them expand their strike zone. I mean, I think that's going to work for a long time. And if you can stay in that position, then you're going to give yourself the best um, chance to be successful. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think we'll end it with that. I, I really hope we can get together because I know you have yeah, a million, million baseball stories that we would love to hear. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> oh, no doubt about it, man. I'm I'm back and forth through um, Louisiana all the time. So. Oh, you are? Well, please, yeah. please let me know when you come back down. I, I, we'll go out of our way to come to you or, or hopefully maybe you can come see our place over here. So. Yeah. No doubt about it. My son is a student over in Baton Rouge, so he's um, – He's uh, playing ball there, so I'm I'm in New Orleans driving to Baton Rouge all the time. Oh, wait, is, he, sure is I... he going to JUCO there, or where's no, he going? No, he's at Southern. He's at Southern. Oh, University. Southern. Yeah, I know. I I work with a, a graduate of Southern, Cody Hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, and I had a couple of guys that went to some of your um, camps um, that live here in Atlanta, and um, I'm just awful. trying to get them to. And I always ask him, I'm like, dude, didn't you go through the um, top velocity program and you got no stability on your front side i'm like yeah. where's that overhand uh med ball throw that you've been working on so they they <laughs> yeah, they well, always they, a flashback it, it, you know it's, it's at the end of the day they can come through my camp but a very a small percentage of them actually want to do the work that's that's what's unfortunate exactly and that's where we're at because like i said you gotta really 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 want to be good to be a good pitcher and that means you gotta have you got to be obsessed with it. You know, if you know the day before that you've been working on stability, when you go to bed at night, you got to be thinking about how you can, how you can fix that or how you can increase that or how you can get stronger at that. And a lot of times guys now, they just think when they show up that they can kind of pick up where they left off for the previous week or the previous session. And you got to continue to do that stuff on your own along with, whatever instructor that you have that's, that's giving you that information. So, exactly. you know, it's hard work, man. It you don't exactly. find out who wants it. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Freeman. And please, uh, please let us know when you come by. I, I want to show you the whole system. I think you'd, you'd enjoy it. Yeah. No doubt about it, man. And y'all can call me free, man. You know, I'm okay. We can call you free. You can call me free. All right. That's, All what, right. that's All right. my ex teammates. <laughs> that's your nickname. Is that close friends or is that, is that what everybody calls you? No, that's them. Them my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I feel honored. We on the now. same. So we on the same squad now. So I'm free to y'all. All right, well, thank you, free. I appreciate it. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. And we'll we'll touch base again soon. And um, hopefully, I'll get to meet you guys sometime this summer. We cool. love that, and we'll see you on Instagram. No doubt about it. Thanks, free. All right, thank you. Take care, guys. So cool, cool interview with free. Uh, I think the coolest thing is, you know, you, you run into somebody kind of obviously through the internet and it's cool to know that he's actually 
known about our program the whole time. And his son goes to Southern, which is pretty much right here. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool that you have those connections with people. You're just meeting specifically somebody who's very well known, very well respected, a lot of credibility, a lot of experience in the game. Hope he comes down. That would be awesome to have him down um, and actually sit here and show him everything. Yeah, I think yeah. he would just really feed off of that really well just because, you know, if you have a perspective of the lower half and, and how it drives the kinetic chain and, you you know, you're coming into this system you've never seen before, and, you know, this is, this is a pretty in-depth system for him to see from our strength and conditioning to our, you know, anaerobic conditioning to our throwing drills and, and our biometric stuff and how we Force break it down. plates. Yeah, and all that. I think he would be like a kid in a candy store. I really think he would just really be excited to see it all. And we might, and at the same time, too, we'd probably, we would collaborate on a lot of things. So I really hope he comes down um, and we could spend some time with him just kind of sharing yeah. a lot of our, um, I'm sure our understanding will. and experience. Yeah, so also, too, it's good to know you know, I, you know, I've had also from his area, from the from over there in East Cobb, I've had a lot of Af- African American pitchers come down here, and um, you know, express to me the issues with it in the African American community, and it's upsetting, you know, to hear that um, because it's you know it's a sport that has such ethnicity to it. There's so many different cultures that are a part of it. Mm-hmm. So to hear that one culture, one that's a very strong culture to our culture to mm-hmm. the you you know to america to hear that they're dwindling is kind of disheartening so it's something that i've always felt i wanted i wish i could do something about it i hope i could do something about it um um so it's kind of it's a touchy subject and and it's good to hear that someone like him and also marquise grissom and yeah you know uh Lat- latroy hawkins who's good friends with david arzma you know are all driving this urban youth academy so uh, you know a big shout out to the urban youth academy if there's anything we could do for them, I would love to be able to do something for them Absolutely. as well. Um, and if any of you out there um, have some ideas on how to how to help them, support them, or just want to share your opinions on on what's going on with, you know, the urban youth as far as in the Afri- African American cultures and, and why they're dwindling, and and maybe give us ideas on on you know how we can help that community that culture revive itself in the sport because. They're, they have a big history in the sport, a huge history in the sport. Yeah. It, and it's kind of interesting and cool hearing him talk about how, like in the World Baseball Classic, he said, you know, his brothers should have their own mm-hmm. team. I mean, you look you look at the Negro League and how popular that was. I mm-hmm. mean, as much as that was some, you know, kind of during, a, I guess, a dark time of our history. But it was it was so, so popular. Yeah. Um, I've played here in what's called the Sugarcane Leagues here, and they're very old amateur leagues that are predominantly African-American. And, dude, it's so much fun because, you know, you go to these games and there's tons of people there. And, you know, obviously a lot of African-Americans there and they're very supportive and they love it and they're very much into it. And you can kind of feel what it was like probably back then during the years of the Negro Leagues when they they, they were just as loving baseball as, as anyone else was. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, and and to not and to see you know the history and how it all merged through Jackie Robertson and all of that come together, and to know now that it's it's like dying, it, I think it's it's upsetting to hear that. It really yeah. is upsetting to hear that. Mm-hmm. I would hate I would hate to to hear that it gets worse. It only has to get better, I believe, at this time. So I don't know. Throw your thoughts out there of what you think uh, we could do. Um, besides that, it was a great interview. I think he's a good guy. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, any last words? Uh, no, I, I, like I said before, I think it's just, uh, it's an awesome interview and, uh, I hope everybody enjoys it. All right. So next, next show, I don't know who we're going to do here. So actually I do, I do know who we're going to do. I forgot. We've pocket got radar. Pocket radar, pocket radar coming up next episode. Stay tuned. Be really awesome. We're going to learn about pocket radar, how they built their business about the radar. A lot of good things. I mean, it's been popular. Also, too, we have a discount. We can code that they give us, which is cool. Top Velo, if, you, if you're going to get one. But they got their new Pro a radar with the display. It's the, the most affordable one on the market. We're going to talk about all that. So excited for next episode. We're going to have Pocket Radar on. So we'll see you on the, the next episode. Cool.